morning all. I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your morning flash update. And this is for Friday, October 1st. Thank God I'm saying October, not September. October 1st, 2021, 8.30 a.m. Uh, daylight savings time. Now, let's talk about something. A big up day in the markets. You started off sharply lower in the stock market. You were down 200 when I woke up this morning. You're now up 200. Uh, the dollar index down a little bit as some currencies gaining on it. Copper, 800 point gain, and that's off the high by two, so it was up 10 cents. Uh, part of what's going on in copper, I can tell you, China put out an edict yesterday. They don't give a darn if it's dirty coal or clean coal, electricity, every form of energy. They are not going to run out of energy. Produce, produce, produce. Now, the heck with the green for a moment. We've got to keep our country going. That's the edict that came out there. On the energy market, as we look at it, a reasonable break happening finally in the nat gas. This is probably going to offer some buying setups down the road. That's my guess. Uh, as we take a look at the rest, pretty stable right here. In the grain market, did you overdo it yesterday in beans? Probably. Corn market, up seven and a half. The market yesterday was all over the board. And another 16 cent gain here. What's going on all of a sudden on interest rates that we're back under a 1.5? We're pushing 148, 149 in the 10 year note. Well, what's the date? October 1st. What happens at the beginning of a quarter, the beginning of a month? New money gets deployed. So that's what you're dealing with. This is a, a typical phenomenon. It happens over and over. It's like season changes. That's what happens when you start quarters. I'm a little concerned that yesterday I was watching Bed Bath & Beyond, and I know we're talking commodities here, but you have to understand what's going on there. And the reason that they missed their numbers is supply chain issues. Those supply chain issues haven't changed. So for the stock indices, at least, I'd be a bit cautious right here. And the reason is I question on this earnings season what we're going to hear. That's a little bit of a change. In fact, it's a big change. Because with China having to shut down factories or curtail operations, you're not improving that supply chain issue. We'll see if the dollar can hold up with all this. It's getting a bit of a sell-off right now. In terms of personal income, the numbers came in as expected. The uh, Consumption spending up eight tenths. They were expecting up seven tenths. That's better. The uh, core PCE price index month over month up three tenths. Year over year, that was up uh, one tenth greater than it was. The price index, well, right what the market thought. And the um, for the August up, I don't know why I have it in there. We well, yeah, have year over year, month over month. Now I got it. Market Group comes out in about 10 minutes with their data. Construction spending at 9 o'clock. University of Michigan, the final consumer sentiment numbers for September will be coming out. Uh, so uh, this we've already got the personal income. It's down there. So interesting day. What do you do with it? Well, you take a deep breath. You're thankful that we're through with September. You understand that there's been no House vote. I didn't think there would be if you saw last night's summation by me. Why would the progressives agree to anything if they don't first get their 3.5 trillion, I'm not gonna say billion, thank you for correcting me, one of you out there, a trillion dollar package or some part of that done before they give the vote on the infrastructure bill. If they go for that infrastructure bill first, they get nothing. Then we have the debt ceiling. I think you gotta drop all these other bills and address the debt ceiling right now. Janet Yellen's not wrong. We have to not go into a default on what we've got. So those are the issues, at least, as I'm seeing them. But the bigger issue for you, this is a great time now. It, we're through the roughest month of the year, September, historically speaking. October offers a lot of volatility, and then as you get into the end of the year, I think th things become a bit more predictable. At least that's been what I have discovered in my 50 years of doing this. Take your time out to learn five steps of how to analyze a chart. They'll carry with you for years, years, maybe decades to come. They have been part of my life, and this is how I look at a chart. I don't give a darn any chart. Cover the name of it. I could care less. If it's a chart, I can read it, and I'm going to tell you what I think the trend is, the risk associated with the trend, the ideas of it. It's 54 videos. 
about eight hours of video time. I create and teach in a certain way. I start with a PowerPoint video. I want you to learn the basics. Then we go to a real chart and I show you the workings of it and then chart action as it's actually took place. And then in the mornings, I don't want you to be left out. You get my research and my morning video. So each step of the way, you're up to date with what I teach. I think that it gives you an awful lot to work with. It's not expensive. $249.95, you get the $60 value of all my research for 30 days. You get the $100 charting software included, and then you get all the videos. Come on, folks, that is not expensive by any stretch. Go out for courses, they're all over the internet for $1,000, $5,000, I've seen them. You don't have to spend that kind of money. To learn more about this, just go to our website under the word education. Everything you need is there. I'm I Rapstein. I'll see many of you obviously at the end of the day today with our market wrap ups, I hope. And then my subscribers, you'll see me over the weekend as we review the weekly charts for the longer term trade ideas. You have a great day. I'm I Rapstein.